What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day, night, wherever you're from. Trying to bring back 60 Days In. Going to try something new. See if we can get past all this. Because I know my thing is fair use. So I'm reviewing the episode. I don't understand why it's not letting me put it up. But hopefully this works. And we can get back rolling through these episodes. Um, I'm pretty much done with season one. No matter what I do, I can't get that up there. So I'm going to start with season two. See if that works. And if it does, then I'll go ahead and redo the rest of season one. I think I'm only missing four episodes. So I will try that. But anyhow, let's get into this video. Let's drop right into it. And hope you guys enjoy the video. Yeah, we know all this. Come on. The mission was to be an undercover inmate and help root out crime and corruption. <laughs> oh, Robert. <laughs> At the conclusion of the program, we gained a lot of valuable information. I do know that almost every cell, they figured out how to get those light fixtures open, and they're hiding stuff in the light fixtures. Your trustees are really destroying your I police I wonder if they you. took the advice of the season one participants and implemented that into this season. The troublemakers, they cause a ruckus, they yell, they scream, they run Like they said they were going to do. Based on that information, we started retraining corrections officers to check the food trays for contraband. I mean, you should have been we doing that from the get-go. We made them more efficient in checking new hiding spots. We learned a lot in phase one, but I definitely... Y'all just got some lazy CO. Our hope for phase two would be to get more in-depth information. There are still drugs coming in the facility, and we would like to find out how they're getting in. Phase one ended I mean, it's common sense. Ago, now we're starting phase two. You know these other inmates are seasoned. They've been in there for a while. So when you come in as a new inmate... They're going to be watching everything that you do. And probably the less you say, the better. You come into a like, There ain't no privacy. yourself and be a loner. And be aware of your I hate it. And sometimes you just can't help it. It just happens sometimes. I'm pretty sure that's Anybody why I stick to myself now. Prison, like, how is it? If I don't like really being yourself, around you defend people. Yourself, you know, you're not going to be uh, charged criminally for defending yourself. But on the other aspect, if you do commit a crime unprovoked, you will be charged. Well, somebody or maybe I'm just you old. Know, I definitely don't have a problem defending myself. And I grew out of it. I don't know. Dion. Take some of that spaghetti. You heating it up for me. Yes. I'm Dion. I'm 24 years old. I'm a criminologist. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. You're asking us to do a lot of snitching here, which I'm firmly prepared to do, but, you know, what's the repercussions of that? I don't want you to go question inmates about anything to draw any type of attention to yourself. Yeah, use some common sense. A good witness and a good, don't just witness. roll up in there and be like, hey, 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 come here, man. How's the drugs getting in, man? Having that police officer come mentality, on. you will know what to look for. If you see the staff doing something that doesn't look right, it probably isn't right. They got dirty cops in the city, boy. Dirty. Why is y'all? They treat us like uh, animals, for real. I don't I mean, have any respect you act like for an animal. COs you get treated law like one. I don't even have any respect for the judicial system because it's severely broken. I'm Mona Lisa, and I live in New York. I need to know the truth about incarceration because my daughter is currently incarcerated. Very nice to meet you. First of all, Thank ain't you. no helping anybody unless they want to be helped. You My can talk to somebody and try to help I you. Help. Have you can talk to them and try to help them to the blue in the face. The jail with me. If they ain't ready to change, they ain't going to change. Plain and simple. For your sake, your safety, I'm more than anything, I just don't like causing you. So to go in the there with that mindset that I'm going to go help these people struggling with addiction, waste of time in my opinion. This is probably where I would have ended you can talk up to if him. I hadn't turned my life around. I mean, around. if it makes you feel better. As much as Zach has kind of told me how his experience was, it's completely different. You put a but, room full of men together and a room full of women who are in trouble, you're going to have two totally different situations. It scares me that I don't know what to expect until I'm there. What's the uh, propensity for gangs and racial segregation and whatnot here? What? Things I need to be... Uh, you gotta turn this language down. Yeah, for man. For racial segregation. You can't go in there talking like that. <laughs> You're gonna have a rough time, man. A rough time. Is this a thing that I'm gonna have to keep up and basically just talk uh, monosyllabically? Because I don't wanna come <laughs> off as condescending either. Yeah, so. and it will come off as condescending. I have no problem actually pulling through any of this in terms of just being in jail. I mean, there are people weaker than me, mentally and physically, uh, less intelligent than me, who've made it, and I'll prevail as well. My name is Ryan. I'm from this Kentucky. Is going. A lot of people don't realize that uh, when you're in jail, 
it's not just that you can't leave, it's that they really take away a lot of the rights that you have. So freedom is it's very important to me. I like rights. I like freedom. <laughs> America! Go um, <laughs> on, man. I was 19 years old, and I worked as a code team medic in King's Daughter's Intensive Care for just shy of three years. I'm currently applying to be a police officer. I have no idea what I'm getting into in terms of what it's actually like to be an inmate. Well, well you write me every day. <laughs> My name is Brian. I'm 39 years old, and I'm an attorney for I can take a the guess, California Department right? of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Well, when was the last time we spent more than a week apart from each other? Even if I had never seen the show before, it's got to be at least a decade. I'm married I can to my pretty wife, much Jane, guess and we have two what's going to go on with this guy. I have a seven-year-old son named Joseph, and just by a looking at him, names Micah. We're going to curl some Joe. Okay, ready? Uh, ready. His whole Joe. demeanor. <laughs> I love them all so dearly. I'm so lucky to have them in my life. Oh. Oh. As an attorney for the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, my job is to go after the corrections officers in my department who commit job-related misconduct. So I don't have a good feel for how well corrections officers typically do their job. My name's Chris, and I live in Georgia. I've never had any trouble with the law besides, like, speeding tickets and a parking ticket. The reason I've never been you in jail like is to be Ricky Bobby, huh? You hear all these horrible stories growing up, and then that's where criminals and love <laughs> first your last, right? right? <laughs> but my brother Ryan ended up spending about four months in jail. Ooh, four months. So me and my brother, we've seen a lot together. But after Ryan got out of jail, we didn't communicate like we did before he went in. He was a complete stranger. Four you know, months changed him like that. Everything fell apart for him. He went homeless. Every bad decision I feel like I could sit here and think of, he did. But I've been like kind of trying to wrap my head on what's the environment that's, gonna be. I don't like, know. If they talk like I said, I try not to judge, but that's some weak minded that, stuff to me. That's what I did. I didn't really mess with nobody. You know, the jail changed Probably you the biggest in thing when we get out of this program is seeing things from Ryan's perspective and kind of understanding why not only we fell apart, but kind of why he can't seem to move on from it. I want to come back like 40 pounds heavier with like three little honey buns. You'll know how to make like prison birthday cake and I know. yeah, I figured you probably did. Really, no pressure. Some of that officer. food be good so though. Get to do this. Of course, no one's ever really. We'll be ready knocking on the prison food. That's some jail. stuff you making there. But y'all the saw the nacho that, video. This opportunity is so amazing. Make some good to food learn in there. Something and hopefully to make some great changes. Of course, you get big like me if you keep if you eating it. For your safety, you know, still good. It's jail. You're gonna have a decision every second of every day of whether you want to stay there or not. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. That's not up to me. My name is Quentin. I'm a retired state policeman, private investigator, and bounty hunter. Okay. I just like the way. It's okay. <laughs> I have three daughters, and I'm in the process of a divorce. Mm. It's extremely important for me to do this because I am curious to learn what it's like for all the people that I've brought into the system. I'm taking a deep breath in. So what are you in for? A warm fight. Uh, Damn, look at that head, gun. man. I'm trying to rehearse my cover story and just trying to get ready. If you just stick with it, you should be OK. You don't owe anybody any explanation. Shocking news, uh, to say the least. Uh, I'm going to miss my family. I'm going to miss everything. There's much to consider. It's not going to be a walk in the park to be in jail. Honey, we're a family. We can get through this. When it's it's all already seems like it's going to be a better season. Go. Even Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Maybe Disneyland, OK? What the hell wrong with you? I don't know black people volunteer to go to jail. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> what there. are you doing? Why don't you be safe, dude? Right. I am breaking completely out of my comfort zone. How you feeling? Not ready to leave She put it on like she was transformed into girl. another woman. The dogs, they're more family than anything. They do give a certain amount of routine. I'll miss that. Oh, baby. Getting ready to walk away from my family for I don't even know how long. Two months? I'm gonna miss you too. 60 days? <sighs> it's gonna suck being away from everybody. That's why it's called so 60 long. days in. It's getting a little bit harder to breathe a little bit now. You about ready? Almost. 
I'm feeling uneasy about not having my man in my space and not being able to talk to my daughter or have any interactions with her. I'm gonna have to dig real deep to find my strength. How do you feel? It's a band-aid that I want to pull off. I'm not gonna be at home with my family to protect them and feeling a little bit of perhaps regret. I'm sure you've thought it through. I will be worried. I really don't know how it's gonna end up. I guess I'm, I'm just gonna have to pull the trigger and go. And it's freaking me out a little bit. Oh. I feel like when the door's shut, I'm gonna be like, oh. Oh, now you ain't excited, huh? I'm ready to get it over with. The taxi is here. Give me one. Take care of my baby, sonny. Bye, guys. I'll be praying for you. Thank you. I just hope that he'll know what he's doing. Bye, bye. bye. See y'all later. You be safe. Yes, ma'am. Go to jail. Love you, baby. Love you, baby. Love you. He knows what she's in for. He seems like he don't even care, though. What happened to the other guy? Oh, that's the sheriff, right? Oh, it's time. Yeah, it's time. Alright, put this hand right here. Quite frankly, I'm scared. Reality is set in for myself, them. Because I want to know what my daughter's going through first and foremost. And I'm praying that nothing happens to her while I'm in here. <laughs> what the hell happened? It sprayed on his face. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, look. Oh, yeah. They gonna mess with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they got him. Got him already. Are you a white collar criminal? Oh, shit. Yeah, we would have been fighting. You ain't gonna be touching me like that. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah, we would have been fighting as soon as you put your hands on me. Why are you doing all that? All right, guys. <clears throat> this season looks already to a good start. I'll try to put out the next video as soon as I can. I'm anxious to see how Ashley does. I know I've seen these before, but I really, I mean, I watched them when they first came on. So I don't really remember every thing that happened through the season. So I, I'm anxious to see how Ashley does. And Zach went through the program and how their relationship is, you know, from, I guess, from, from a female's point of view. I don't know. But I'm anxious to see that regardless. That one dude said he was all excited. Now you're getting sick to his stomach. It happens, man. It happens. It's anxiety. You don't know what you're walking into. You're about to find out, though. Believe that. You're about to find out. So, anyhow. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Smash that like button. I hope we're back finally with 60 Days In. It'd be, it'd be great, you know. Um, subscribe if you haven't done so. Um, that's about it. Uh, I love you guys. And hopefully I see you guys on the next video.